I just really wanted to do this study. Um, I'm actually in pain right now, um, but uh, I have uh, had headaches for uh, about 10 years, um, and uh, just, you know, it's been really hard just to spend the time even to research it myself about what the problems are, um, and uh, just wanted to kind of uh, help out some other people. Um, you know, I've talked with uh, some all kinds of doctors about this um, and it's been very difficult and not got a lot of answers um, and uh, hopefully this will give you at least an overview of how the brain works and uh, hopefully give you some hope uh, that maybe your headaches will stop someday. Uh, so, kind of uh, my personal uh, feelings and kind of a disclaimer here is that, uh, you know, I, I kind of feel that uh, drugs uh, can actually cause a lot of problems. And it's best uh, to really just try to sort out what the real problem is and not just, like, you know, take tons of time on it. And in fact, I think uh, my original problem was because of, you know, one night or even two nights that I just took Tylenol and it just was too much. And I, I think it actually maybe even, uh, you know, punctured a hole in one of the blood vessels or something. So it can be very dangerous uh, to take uh, medicine, certainly a lot of medicine, or even drink alcohol. Uh, you know, I, I, I actually cannot, I feel like I cannot drink any, any, any alcohol or anything like that, or even coffee, um, just because it gives me too much pressure or it kind of, uh, you know, just makes me, I don't know, something something's wrong when I... Uh, take any kind of medicine or drugs. So um, anyway, something to think about uh, before you get into all the details. Um, and then also to think about, um, you know, in terms of like a whole earth perspective, um, I, I visited a friend of mine uh, in Florida and then went back to the north uh, where I live, uh, you know, up in the northwest. And I realized to myself, man, my headaches, it wasn't necessarily a lot worse, but it was a little bit worse um, and it really depends, it could depend on your metabolism, black person or white person, um, you know, where you need to be. Uh, you know, some people might need a drier climate or wetter climate, but certainly the air pressure is something to think of in terms of a possible problem, just more pressure in the air um, or more turbulence, uh, like in Florida, for example. Uh, but uh, anyway, something to think about. So, uh, independent of whether or not this is about headaches or not, um, certainly if you have something that's extremely basic or extremely acidic, it will give you a headache or at least be very painful. Um, so, uh, at a neutral range, you kind of want to be uh, around that. So, that's basically like water. Um, you know, uh, seawater is slightly basic, um, and, uh, and then uh, milk is... Uh, basically, or coffee is like getting towards slightly acidic or like lemon juice and so on. And then, uh, you know, baking soda is basic. So, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to explain everything. Uh, but if you think about it, uh, lemon juice is like stingy and, uh, you know, baking soda is more like blah, like bleh, uh, kind of taste. Um, but basically you want to be neither of those, um, and try to find something that, uh, is, uh, in the middle. Um, is my suspicion. So I uh, just kind of, you know, like days that I've been extremely in pain, you know, I just basically had to have like rice, um, you know, as a food and just really basic kinds of foods. So, um, but that's just a little tip on uh, some things that may help um, in terms of things. Uh, so one really interesting thing is that um, I found uh, just having a clean mouth uh, really helps. If you do a lot of research on this, um, you'll see that a lot of people uh, that have significant headaches actually have uh, pretty bad teeth. My teeth aren't super great. Um, I definitely try to brush my teeth as many times a day as I can. Um, sometimes I'm just totally exhausted, but I totally sleep better and I wake up better. Everything's better when I brush my teeth. So uh, strangely... Um, headaches and uh, keeping a clean mouth uh, may be very related um, just to kind of like isolate what the problem is. Certainly uh, my tension headaches are different, but uh, but clean uh, mouth 
uh, brushed teeth with toothpaste uh, helps. Even if it's a little bit painful, I would clean everything out um, completely um, just to make sure that, um, you know, basically there's no, nothing in, uh, you know, that could get you sick inside your mouth. And this is just a quick search on PubMed showing that, uh, yeah, I mean, some of the top searches for headaches come up with uh, tooth problems. Um, so certainly, um, you know, clean water and clean mouth and just clean body overall. I take a shower, um, you know, I have to take a shower at least twice a day um, just to get rid of my headaches sometimes. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and warn you right away is that, uh, you know, maybe my problem was directly related to taking Tylenol uh, to try to handle my headaches and being, f you know, it just did not work for me and caused huge problems, maybe even burst a blood vessel inside my head. So, uh, but I thought this equation was kind of interesting to look at. Um, you basically have uh, acid plus base is equal to water. Um, so when you take a uh, you know, if you are kind of in, it's just an interesting equation to kind of look at. Uh, so one not so funny thing, but actually kind of funny, um, is that, uh, you know, I really thought I had a tumor. I was just having headaches for years and it was not going away and it felt like something was inside of my head and all these kind of things. And, you know, after getting an MRI, um, which I'll talk about at the end of this, um, I realized that I didn't have a tumor, um, um, but I still, honestly, I feel like I do. Um, and, uh, but it's something to think about, uh, just, uh, you know, if you're in a lot of pain, um, that, you know, you really should spend some time and try to think, uh, rest, first of all, as much as you can, um, in pain, just, uh, thinking about this and working on this project. Um, but, uh, yeah. So kind of the approach that I'm going about here is, uh, starting by looking at the neuroanatomy and basically the research that's available on the internet. Um, and hopefully uh, presenting that to you in a very simple way. Um, just take some time. Don't stress about it too much. Um, and just try to relax. Uh, so uh, I guess the first thing uh, to think about is that, uh, you know, where is your headache? Obviously, you know, uh, you're probably in a lot of pain. Um, and uh, just think about uh, one kind of idea. So, uh, you know, I, what I read is that uh, a lot of headaches are tension-related headaches. Um, and, you know, that's kind of like concentrating too much or something. Um, and uh, basically, you got to uh, let go. Um, so uh, the headaches, um, you know, basically, on my, in my particular example, are on the right side of my head. Um, and they last for days or even months. Um, so I haven't really totally been able to figure everything out about it, um, but... Uh, at least you can uh, get started in some of the things I've figured out that have helped me um, a lot. Uh, so I need to make this point very clear. Um, and it's a problem that I've had for many, many years. And I feel like I finally sorted it out. So for me, I have a pain on the right side of my head. Let's say you have a pain on your right or your left side of your head or back or front. And one of the most important things is to not press on it. Um, and just let it, let your blood flow naturally. Um, so this is a really complex part of trying to understand the brain. So it's not like you can just for unforce your headache. What you have to do is let things kind of let your body. So first of all, you have to be healthy, right? So you have to have clean water, clean mouth, clean body, clean bed that you're sleeping in with clean sheets, and then just rest. Um, and when you get up, you might feel great. And then you might try to do something because you're like, oh, my God, I feel great. I can do work. Try to do something. But as soon as you start to feel even the slightest bit of tension in any part of your head, relax your head. Let Your head may, be, may go crazy like mine. Mine moves in all kinds of different directions, and I just got to rest it. Um, until it stabilizes in a happy middle ground. And so it's super important just to rest, like, un let the let 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 things happen in your brain properly. Um, and be careful about uh, doing anything uh, else but just uh, resting. 
Um, so basically, there is a few types of headaches. Um, you know, originally I thought, um, you know, all kinds of things about my headache. I thought I had a tumor in my head, um, just because it lasted for months and months. Um, but basically about 60%, uh, or more, um, and some sources say 90% are tension headaches. Um, another, uh, 10 to say 16% are migraine. Um, and the other interesting thing here is that, uh, women get about uh, three times as many migraine headaches as men, but tension headaches, which is what I believe I have is about five to four for, so it's more for men. Um, and then there's these things called cluster headaches and a bunch of different other names for headaches. Um, one thing you want to be sure of to rule out all the problems is just uh, clean water. So um, my belief is that a lot of headaches are just from bad quality food. Like the other day, um, you know, I had a pretty bad headache, but it felt kind of different than what I usually have, which is a tension headache. And then later on, I had some diarrhea and just realized, hey, that was probably something I ate um, and not my normal headache. Um, so uh, it could be complicated and mixed up, um, but you probably have uh, one of these categories. Um, but I would say, you know, essentially it's probably either a migraine or a tension headache. Um, and to kind of look at um, the uh, more, uh, more common types of headaches first as a possibility. Um, and uh, just kind of relax and take your time, take a shower, um, you know, rest as much as you can. Um, and uh, sometimes for me personally with my tension headaches, you know, I'll rest a lot. Um, I'll get up and then, you know, 30 minutes or so after I get up, I'll get the same headache again and I'll just be frustrated and try to stay awake and work on whatever I need to work on. But essentially the headache just keeps getting worse and worse. And then over the days I just zonk out. Uh, one of the days for maybe several days um, because of just I need extreme sleep because of the headaches. So I'm basically trying to figure out how to deal with a uh, tension headache. Um, and to give you a quick story about it is just uh, try to relax and not think about whatever you're thinking and just let your brain kind of uh, relax. Uh, so the connectome has been helpful for me to understand. And at the same time, certain details have made my life worse just because I think I understand uh, what's going on and I don't. Um, so basically, but the connectome um, is complex enough where, um, you know, for example, one of the problems I had uh, over the years is I thought uh, that I could kind of like press my way into rebalancing my headaches. Um, and that didn't quite work out at all because uh, the brain actually is not very symmetric uh, in a lot of ways, uh, a lot of the images that you first see. And I've even heard that there's several different primary types of brain uh, uh, like looks. So uh, basically what I was suggesting here is that um, the connectome just kind of gives you an overall view of how the brain works. Um, you got to be very careful um, to uh, kind of like balance things out, obviously. But uh, at the same time, you want to, with a tension headache, like what I have, uh, you want to kind of relax um, and in some ways just trust God and the natural world to uh, kind of balance things out. So uh, you just want to be careful uh, with like high blood pressure and things, um, which I'll talk about uh, as well. So over the years, um, I've had a lot of trouble, uh, you know, with these headaches, um, and uh, I, I think it was actually primarily related to uh, blood flow, um, and just, uh, you know, sometimes like in life, you just really try to solve a problem, and you work hard at it, and please don't listen to me too much about this, uh, because who knows, you might start thinking about, hey, I really got to solve this problem, um, but if you really think about how the universe works um, in a balanced sense, um, just really focusing on a specific task or problem isn't necessarily going to solve your problem. You need the rest of the universe to kind of work with you on solving that problem. Um, so that's per, perhaps one of the main causes is just uh, stress um, and, uh, you know, uh, putting too much stress um, inside your head. Um, so I originally I thought a lot of it was with blood pressure, and certainly blood pressure is, is very much related. Um, I was shocked 
uh, when I bought a uh, blood pressure uh, sensor and kind of uh, started measuring my blood pressure, I was like, hey, you know, I'm pretty young and I have high blood pressure. What the heck? Um, and then further, I started to notice that um, the tension headaches on the right side of my head were far worse when it was only about, I don't know, it was like 10 millibars higher than usual. So, you know, your, you know, the blood pressure, you can track this and even keep track of it on your phone and things like this. And certainly, man, when my blood pressure was high, my headaches were horrible, were absolutely horrible. So it's, just, it's hard to explain how bad and how significant blood pressure is. So to make a long story short, uh, I'm a vegetarian and, um, you know, sometimes with vegetarian, you can eat cheese and things like that, which basically even makes your life worse. Um, but uh, you want to be careful in general. Um, certainly being a vegetarian can help, um, but just don't eat too much and stand on a scale and watch your weight very closely. It's really hard to lose weight, um, but certainly if you're trying to get rid of headaches, it's for sure helped. Even losing, you know, like 10 pounds or 5 pounds has been you know, night and day in terms of the strength of the headaches. I still get headaches, but certainly it's a lot worse. And I try to take at least three walks, four walks a day, uh, you know, at least a couple miles each walk. And certainly I almost have to do that in order to like not get a headache uh, in the day. So a lot of people working office jobs like me, I was a programmer focused really closely on a lot of detailed work. And that just made a really painful stuff. I, I eventually had to sleep during uh, lunchtime and pretty much just lost my job um, because, uh, you know, I, I had to sleep. I couldn't, I couldn't do anything else. I would focus. And then it was just because the tension headache. So I, I think if I would have sat in my chair and just closed my eyes more, but I was kind of fearful. My boss would say, Hey, I'm sleeping or something at work. But so I just went to my car and tried to rest. Um, and eventually that helped a lot, but it just, I realized that, man, I needed even more sleep and it was just too hard for me. So, uh, but anyway, uh, but to make a long story short, these are some blood models to kind of give you some ideas. Um, so to make a long story short, um, you know, I probably, I have two types of headaches. I, I have primarily tension headaches and then also migraine and they're probably interrelated in some ways. And, you know, I, I haven't really had a whole lot of time to study sinus headaches. Um, my suspicion is that a lot of that has to do with uh, the quality of water that you're having. I don't really have a lot of sinus headaches like I used to have when I was a kid. My nose used to drain a lot and things like that. But uh, but essentially, uh, you know, my suspicion is that if you really careful about your water and make sure all your food is really clean and washed... Um, and you know, isn't rotting, you're going to not have these sinus headaches as well as kind of watching all the typical things. Um, just like, like, you know, some of my friends have like zits on their backs or lots of zits, for example. And it's just because their diet is a little bit wild. Um, and then maybe that even turns into sinus headaches. It's just hard to know because there's not a whole lot of data on this type of stuff. Uh, so, uh, first of all, one question that you might be asking is, should I get an MRI? Um, and I actually, uh, good news is I did do an MRI. Um, and, uh, originally, um, the one th point that I would make about MRIs is that if you're going to get an MRI, uh, make sure that you have a friend or a family member that has a MRI viewer. Um, because oftentimes the doctors can't spend enough time or they just won't look into the things that you want to look into. Um, and it really, it did help a lot. Um, you know, I, I actually didn't see anything. Uh, unfortunately I thought I saw some things, um, but I'm still, and I'm still in the process of working with, uh, some family members to study the MRI and things like this. Um, but certainly, um, I wouldn't get an MRI unless, uh, you have the capability to really look into it in detail. Um, you know, probably what's going to happen is they're going to come back in a day and just say, Hey, no problem. And that's essentially what they did to me. And I'm like, Hey, I'm still in terrible pain. What do you mean? No problem. So I, I think that the real problems are actually quite complex and maybe even most of the doctors, um, don't know. So you really need to look into it yourself, um, and study the MRIs, um, in great detail. Um, and I still don't know, um, you know, my suspicion is that it's just a tension headache. Um, so it's kind of hard for those to show up on, you know, with the resolution that they have today on the MRIs. And certainly you might even be careful, 
um, about getting too high of resolution because, you know, MRIs could cause cancer and, you know, it's, and ultimately it's probably just something that you can solve, uh, by resting more, um, and kind of learning about how to rest, uh, your brain properly rather than, uh, uh, something else. So anyway, um, just a thought here on MRIs. Uh, so I was able to find some free viewers. I actually haven't tested it out myself, um, but uh, you know I basically depended on a family member that had access to uh, you know whatever the state of the art uh, tools were um, because of research, and uh, basically was able to view with them. But it was really frustrating because I would needed to spend even more time than they had um, to really look at it myself. So I'm still in the process of looking at it. But you may want to look up DICOM, which is kind of a funny name, like die, calm, and then viewer. Um, and basically that's the standard of the file. Um, may have a slightly different standard or file name, but uh, basically most of the imageries from the MRIs are called DICOM files. Uh, so you might find this unbelievable, and hopefully it's an unbelievable fact that will help you, but basically of the deaths every year, a large percentage of those are due to hypertension. Um, and my personal feeling is that a lot of people that have hypertension, it starts as terrible headaches. And so what I would say is that if you have any problem with your body, get it sorted out as soon as possible and just try to spend some time relaxing and solving the problem because someday you could end in a serious serious problem. Um, but this is kind of the statistics um, for hypertension and kind of see related to other different problems. Uh, so I think I'm just about done here discussing the headaches. There's a few more details. And I just wanted to say, hey, you know, if you're tired of listening to me, um, maybe you can do a PubMed search here. Um, or you can also do a Google Scholar search for headaches um, and kind of look at some different ideas. What I would say, though, is that honestly, uh, this... Uh, research right here is awesome and just take a walk take a shower um, try to drink lots of water um, and uh, take your headaches seriously um, and don't let it last you know years and years like in my case and just relax um, and really try to uh, you know solve the problem and so I'm just going to conclude here with basically the main types of headaches. I was shocked. Um, you know, don't overcomplicate things. There's not that many types of headaches, basically three types. Um, and one of those being tension, the other being migraine, and then everything else, essentially. So you probably either have, most people say they have a tension headache or a migraine. So try to think of it in that sense. Um, and like I said, I was very worried and I thought I had a tumor in my head and all these things. And I was very thankful to take an MRI. It gave me a lot of peace of mind, but it's very expensive to do that. Um, and, uh, so on. Um, so, uh, I was really interested in what the main types of headaches are out there. Um, and, uh, I was kind of surprised to find out that, uh, most headaches, about 90% are tension type headaches. And believe it or not, that made me feel a lot better better uh, because I kind of realized, well, that's maybe the kind of headaches that I'm getting. Um, but I'm going to go into all the details of all the different types um, and start with uh, these tension headaches. And uh, I'm not an expert on tinnitus, but one day I called up my friend and uh, he told me, hey, there's this thing called tinnitus. And I said, hey, you know, I hear this ringing in my ears. Do you hear ringing in your ears? And this all started to happen way before I had serious headaches. Um, and I think it's actually related, um, definitely if you have some time to study tinnitus, um, just making sure that you don't hear like a high pitched sound and kind of just resting as much as you can and staying out of like high noise, high pressure areas might even solve your problem entirely. Um, and I still believe that maybe if I get rid of tinnitus, I could get rid of all my tension headaches. But I, so I think they're kind of interrelated. You got to get rid of tension headaches to get rid of your tinnitus and so on, um, and just, I was shocked when I went to the doctor, and he pulled out literally like an inch of, uh, you know, earwax, and I was like, holy, I, I was like, I can't even believe I can hear, like, it was just an unbelievable amount of earwax, so, uh, you know, you got to keep your ears clean carefully, and man, it, it actually scared me, I was like terrified when I went to the doctor, and they pulled out that much earwax, 
Um, but certainly tinnitus, in my opinion, is a very important area of research. I'm not even sure how many what percentage of people have it, but you know, I'm pretty young and I have tinnitus. It's not really bad, but from what I understand, some people have horrible tinnitus. Um, thank God I don't, but I have horrible headaches. So um, maybe my tinnitus is bad and I just don't realize it. But certainly with that much earwax coming out, I was scared. I mean, I, I was just totally scared. Um, but uh, something to think about is uh, tinnitus. So honestly, I'm really scared to even talk about tinnitus. You just got to be very careful. When I went to the doctor and they removed the earwax, you know, they squirted some stuff in there. They had like flashlights and it took a long time and it was actually pretty painful getting it removed. I was scared the whole time. Um, so I would just be extremely careful, you know, about getting uh, earwax removed. But if you hear ear, ear ringing, um, you know, just uh, think about it and uh, try to figure it out. There is some kind of stuff that you can buy, which is basically like hydrogen peroxide that you can like squirt in your ear. Um, and I've done that. Um, it's something you can buy at the drugstore and it does get rid of a lot of the earwax and keeps it pretty clean. And I still try to do that. Um, and, uh, something to think about. Uh, but here's basically a diagram of the ear. Uh, so what is the idea about deep breathing and getting rid of headaches? Um, what I would say in general is don't think about your headache too much. If you're doing deep breathing, let your body solve the problem. You can really screw up your head um, by doing deep breathing. Um, and basically, you just want to, uh, you know, take a walk, do something else. Like, like when I laugh or just am talking with people, I get a lot less headaches in general. So if I'm not having a headache, I try to just take a walk and get a good uh, breath, fresh air. Uh, in general, I would say it just doesn't hurt to uh, study just about everything about your body. Um, check everything, all your organs. You know, I have other family members, um, you know, and just kind of find out from them as well. So uh, what do you do if you just need help? Uh, so interestingly, uh, most of the research that I found for this uh, project was through uh, the NIH PubMed or just PubMed, um, and you can search all their databases and come up with this kind of like uh, study to kind of show you like what's going on. Um, but in general, uh, PubMed Central has most of the uh, articles. Um, there's also some uh, genes that you might want to study. I haven't really looked into all that yet. Um, and then maybe some specific proteins that are related to uh, headaches. Um, and then you can also see uh, certain genomes. So uh, here's a really interesting picture showing uh, kind of the genes and how that uh, might work. Um, so I'm not really an expert at this, um, but basically uh, there's like 22 or 23 uh, or so genes, cro oh, these chromosomes uh, that basically make up uh, your uh, primary DNA. Um, and uh, basically uh, the red parts here are the parts that are the quote unquote DNA and the rest of these green parts are uh, basically these like housekeeping genes. Um, but uh, it may be uh, super awesome to figure out, uh, you know, like which types of people, uh, depending on their genes, uh, have more, uh, say, different uh, tension headaches, like in my case. Uh, but one interesting fact that I, I think might be true here is that, you know, even if your genes are. Uh, say a lot of people have your uh, problem, uh, your type of headache uh, with your genes, uh, one thing to think about is that there's still, it still might be, uh, you know, like related to, for example, if a lot of people look the same, uh, maybe they're treated the same um, so that their genes over time, their headaches uh, from, you know, certain kinds of stress or whatever. Uh, so it, it, it just really could be related to um, essentially how you are brought up or the people that you're around and th other factors that I think are really much more complex than just the genes, um, even though, uh, you know, your genes may be similar. So, uh, and, and in fact, it may be the other way around sometimes. So, for example, uh, your genes might say, hey, you're more susceptible, but uh, if you do something about it, maybe you're even less likely to have the headache. So, I, I, I don't really trust all this stuff. I, I think you got to do your own research, and really you just got to focus on solving the problem independent of your genes. Uh, but it's certainly an interesting area of study. 
So here's a really awesome graph. I'm not sure exactly what all these details mean here, but basically it's a composition of the human genome. So, you know, if you have all those little uh, genes or chromosomes, uh, basically what are they, what's the percentages of each one? So, you know, if you have a problem, um, you know, it might not necessarily be these interneurons or whatever they call them. You know, it could be one of these other branches, um, but it's probably... You know, some of them are just used for, like, these housekeeping. So, for example, there's a lot of redundancy required because, you know, as your blood duplicates over, you know, 50 to 100 years of time, there could be mistakes made in the genome. So it's really important to have a lot of redundancy. So that's why uh, maybe a big percentage of your uh, chromosomes or genes would be uh, kind of redundant because it means safety. So that's one factor to think about. But uh, basically, you want to look at the functional, I, I believe that's what it's called, functional parts of your chromosome or genes, and kind of figure out uh, what might be related to headaches. And honestly, I, I didn't really see a lot of research yet on this topic, but uh, maybe there is um, on PubMed and things like this. So uh, here you kind of have, um, you know, the basically genome size, uh, you know, for fishes, plants, and Homo sapiens. So basically, you can see that um, you know the genome size, this base pair thing, is not necessarily the most for humans. Um, but it's interesting to see. Um, I was shocked when I found out um, that like corn is you know maybe seventy percent similar to the human, right? Uh, in terms of uh, actually the the uh, if you were to study it under a microscope, the uh, genome and uh, chromosomes. But uh, maybe be ninety percent. I'm not even sure what the number was, but uh, but it's basically interesting just to see uh, you know relationships here. Uh, so in general, it's just a huge uh, discussion. Um, and this, I kind of like this diagram. It just kind of shows um, how possibly this might work. So basically, if we were trying to figure out where a headache uh, might be in the uh, chromosome or some kind of thing, or what uh, might cause um, some kinds of problems, uh, it might be interesting just to look at uh, you know, kind of the uh, reproductive process or, or the duplication of these uh, cells and the uh, chromosomes. Uh, and there's different parts here, and I just liked how it kind of showed it all really squiggly and then different uh, areas, the like area three, two, and four, and then one, and so on. Uh, and then kind of the relative size, uh, 20 micrometers or uh, 0.2 micrometers um and um just interesting to see how this might work um and if you were kind of researching this so like you know like for example is there a headache region in region number four or is uh, most of the headache uh that, that you discover in the chromosomes or genes found in region two or three and what's the difference uh and these kind of things so it's not just a matter of one area you know it might be multiple areas and just kind of studying it in in a uh, you know extreme detail here <laughs> so so uh, I'm fairly convinced that um, you know a after studying my blood pressure and just realizing that headaches were extremely worse um, with only a slight change in my blood pressure um, <clears throat> that uh, basically my diet is extremely related to my headaches um, of course the foundational problem is something just the way that I think um, so uh, but basically uh, it is, you know, problems can be decreased by kind of understanding the biochemistry. Um, so, uh, and I'm not an expert with this, um, but essentially what you want to do is think about acids and bases uh, and the kind of foods that you're eating and just basically try to be as close to, uh, you know, uh, not really acid or base, be right dead in the middle and, uh, uh, you know, be careful about that until you figure out uh, do you need slightly more acid or slightly more base in your food content. But whoa, I am not an expert on this, and biochemistry is very complex, um, you know, just studying all the proteins and going back to, uh, you know, what we were talking about. Uh, so here's just, like, a really crazy idea that um, I kind of came up with, and uh, believe it or not, I, I kind of believe this. Um, so there's this concept of self-ionization of water. So you've probably seen water just sit around uh, for a while, and it kind of looks different after it sits there for a while. Um, and that may be because it uh, does this process called self-ionization. Make long story short, how is this related to headaches? So uh, basically with headaches, I think if you're not going to do anything about it, you kind of go through this brain phase where it's like, uh, I don't know what the term is for it, but essentially 
uh, you kind of have to stay balanced. So your body is going to uh, go through some f- changes in your brain, um, but you need to stay focused on being, you know, not going to one extreme or the other. Um, and even by doing nothing, uh, you got to be careful about that because it could, if you just sit there, uh, you know, you could be a pro- uh, certainly rest has always helped me. Um, so I'm kind of separating that from the rest of the thing. But anyway, I hope this uh, makes some sense. Um, so what's my final conclusion? What's my statement here? Um, so I, I found this funny little diagram here. I hope you appreciate it. But it was in like some official research journal published on PubMed. And I just thought to myself, hey, man, this is the way we got to end this. It's painful, man, having a headache. Um, if you can do anything, um, you know, try not to use your computer much. Just try to rest. Draw a picture. Maybe it's going to look like this picture of what's going on. Try to figure out basically what's going on. Um, don't think about it too much um, because probably what you need to do is rest the part of your head that hurts um, and just stop doing what you're doing. Uh, even stop watching this video. Uh, but I certainly hope you're doing all right. If you have any questions, you can try to email me or contact me, and I can tell you what I think. I'm not an expert. I'm not a doctor. But uh, I've gone through a lot of pain, and certainly I've thought about this as carefully as I'm able to without getting a headache. And even parts of this gave me a headache. Um, but uh, please, um, just rest. Take a nap. Uh, keep your mouth clean. Take a shower drink clean water, be careful about what you're eating, just narrow down the problems, and hopefully your headaches will go away. I've had headaches for years and years and years and years, and it probably can't be worse than my headache. Um, so uh, just, uh, you know, try to rest the side of your head and and um, and uh, keep, uh, hopefully uh, you'll be healed as soon as possible. <laughs>